Hey everyone, this is Logan Hertz with Hazeltine, back again with Peter Nelson. We are continuing our very popular interview series and just talking about some of the themes that came out of this financial malpractice series, which has been uh, very popular, gotten a lot of good feedback, and I think a lot of great discussion has come out of this real life case. Um, and one of the themes that I think is relevant uh, for both financial professionals and customers of financial professionals is the importance of partnering with other financial professionals rather than viewing them as competition, right? And rather than fighting against each other the way this particular financial advisor is doing it and how much value that can really add to clients um, and financial professionals as well. So Peter, you wanna just give some of your commentary on the importance of partnering with other financial professionals and how it really helps clients to have more of a team than just one person trying to pretend like he's an expert in everything. Absolutely. And thank you so much, Logan, for, you know, um, inviting me on again. I just love to do these, uh, you know, videos with you. And um, yeah, I think it's really, you know, I give you, first of all, the, the credit for, you know, partnering with me to actually, you know, because as you like to say, of course, you're not really, hopefully all of us can say that, that we're not going to be the, can't be the expert of everything to everybody, right? Right, right. And so you, you you know that and you've partnered with me. So you're not securities licensed, for example. And you're okay with that. And frankly, I don't I think you're a lot smarter than I am that um you're not, right? But anyways, I give you the credit to to do that. Because as also you like to say, one plus one equals three, where a, a real partnership, right, um can do so much have such an amazing advantage for a client. Whereas if, if, if you have a financial advisor over here saying that annuities stink and life insurance stinks and blah, 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 then you have the insurance agent over here and say, no, no, you need to incorporate it. How the heck is that ever gonna help that client actually have the most effective and efficient, you know, lifestyle, retirement, you know, retirement income, legacy, all that stuff. So once again, I give you kudos for that. And I think really what we're doing here, building this partnership, um, I think this is the future actually of, of true you know, holistic financial planning it is, is having everybody on the team work together instead of you know like this. So Yeah, yeah, it's so true. And I like the word you use there, incorporate, right? like life insurance and annuities are incorporated into your overall plan. It's not a standalone solution, right? Um, getting back to our offense wins games, defense wins championships mantra. Really, whether you're playing offense or defense, you need to play as a team, right? You need to have the team approach. And so life insurance can't do everything. An annuity can't do everything. Money in the market can't do everything, right? And someone who's an expert in investments probably is not an expert in life insurance, right? And vice versa. So yeah, and, and even if, um, you know, the analogy I like to use is let's imagine you're the CEO of a company and you have all these great employees who are doing great work, but none of them ever talk to each other and none of them have ever coordinate with each other, right? That's kind of the financial picture that a lot of people have where they have their financial advisor who handles their investments. They have their property and casualty insurance agent who sold them their homeowner's insurance and their auto insurance. They have their estate planning attorney, right? They have these different insurance products, right? And none of these guys ever talk to each other, right? And if we could just, we wouldn't have to be geniuses if we could just actually get in the room and coordinate a little bit. How much more efficient of an overall solution uh, would we have? And if I could get on my soapbox even a little bit more, um, I did a lot of time uh, doing strategy consulting for Fortune 500 companies, major projects, lots of money on the table. And a lot of where I was able to add value is just taking a big picture approach, right? Because all of these teams at these large companies are doing the best job they can, but their visibility is limited, right? They don't necessarily understand how their process fits in with the overall process, right? And someone who can take a big picture view can more easily identify opportunities for better efficiencies, right? Just by coordinating all these things um, a little better. 
right? So yeah, the financial advisor, even if he's not like scarcity mentality and dead set against life insurance and all that, still, he's probably not thinking about life insurance when he's composing his investment portfolio. And I'm not thinking about an investment portfolio when I'm designing a whole life insurance policy. So if we can just get together and coordinate a little bit, you know, we, we can have a much more effective solution and it's not rocket science, right? No, you're absolutely right. And I do always think about making, you know, incorporating it into the portfolio. Um, so I'm kind of, you know, I consider myself to be a hybrid because I, my own personal practice, of course, I do life insurance and annuities as well. Um, so I think that's like, once again, that's what makes it powerful. When you start bringing the life insurance and annuities and, and the investments together, my gosh, you know, how powerful is that? Because, you know, like you said, though, okay, you got the advisor over here and okay, great. You got some life insurance at XYZ company. You got some, you got a little annuity over there. Great. But is the advisor really taking that into consideration in regards to the overall planning? And the answer typically is no, right? So when right. we could do that, right? And I right. always go back to that, that Ernst & Young report, not to say the Ernst & Young report is the end all, but they prove that if you incorporate life insurance and annuities into an investment portfolio, you will maximize or optimize, take your pick, um, both retirement income and legacy at the same time when you incorporate those two into the portfolio. And that's powerful. That's what we need, right? We're going through in this country, so many, you know, we're dealing with inflation right now and deflation and almost at the same time, which is really scary. I mean, we're, we have all this debt. We have deleveraging. We got demographics. We got a lot of things coming down the road. And show me a way that you can do an investment-only portfolio that's going to be the most effective and efficient way. And I don't say how it's possible. Yeah, uh, DeAndre Clayton, who uh, you spoke with and who I interviewed recently on my show, we connected through that financial malpractice series. He has a case of a guy who he's got maybe $400,000 in a 401k and like $3.2 million in really nice cash flowing real estate. His financial advisor is telling him, you need to liquidate all that real estate and move it all into the market, like move it all into retirement accounts and mutual funds and stuff like that. Presumably because you'll get a better return on it, right? Like this is the height of folly, okay? And it's the financial advisor pretending like, wait a minute, are you an expert on real estate? Do you even understand why those properties are there or what they're used for? I would never do such a thing. I'm like, okay, like I would like to talk to your realtor. He probably knows what he's talking about. Like, I'm sure there's a reason for this uh, real estate. And if I really want to get more money into my pocket, right, if that's really my goal, <laughs> which hopefully it isn't, but still, you'll probably do better if you use the real estate for what it was int originally intended for. So maybe you take the rental income you're getting from that real estate. Maybe you borrow against it and leverage it and use those funds for something else. Use it more strategically right? And you'll end up with a better, to your point, Peter, better overall financial structure, right? Because now you're using that real estate for what it's really meant for. Most people don't buy real estate so they can turn around and sell it. That's usually not what they're doing. Um, it's usually a long-term strategy, right? So as part of the overall coordination, it's also thinking long-term, Right. So if uh, this particular financial advisor sees cash value in a life insurance policy, he probably has no idea why it was set up that way. Why was it structured that way? What is what, what, what thought process went into it? Right. Because we could do the Peter Nelson strategy of, hey, instead of you trying to pull all that money out of life insurance and get rid of it and just put it all on the market, maybe we use it as an opportunity fund. So when the market crashes, guess what? You can take out a policy loan from your whole life insurance policy and buy a bunch of stocks while the market is down. And now you've given the client tremendous value without surrendering those policies, right? The two are working together now. They're not working against each other, right? Yeah. And thank you for, I was just about ready to mention that and you, you uh, set me up on that. That's great. But yeah, that when I found, when I was taught that strategy right there, Logan, it changed my career like practically overnight. And you're right. What now think about it. If we're going to have all this more volatility in the markets and going forward with all this 
stuff we got coming down the road in this country, right? How powerful is it that if you have if you, if you have a uh, strategy that you're guaranteed to never lose any money, but you still have complete access to that money, right? And you can actually access it income tax free, and hopefully with a very either a wash loan or a very you know minuscule rate, right? Mm -hmm. And as I always like to say, what's the best time to buy into the market when it's higher, when it's low? People say, well, when it's low. And I mm -hmm. say, isn't that how everybody screws up? Don't they stay into the market too long? And then, you know, they get hammered, you know, and they get hammered by it. So they can't take advantage of it. Well, what if there was a way that you could just wait for the crash, you know, access the money, right? Write it back up. And people say, well, you can't time the market. Yeah, in a way, yes. But, get, but here's the thing. What does the government anymore do every time? Oh my gosh, things are bad. Hold on a second. We're going to stimulate the economy, okay? And the minute they say that, we're going to stimulate the economy, that's when you want to make sure to have the, the money in the market because what happens? They're going to print a whole pile of money. That thing's going to take off like a rocket ship, right? Mm -hmm. And here's the rule that we say, right? We say that, you got to keep the money in um, the market for at least a year. Why is that? Long-term capital gains, right? Mm -hmm. 12 months in a day, you know, year, I mean, year in one day. And uh, yeah, you get those long-term capital gains, you pay, repay the loan. And here's the powerful thing about that. You can do that for the rest of your life. As I like to say, you can take advantage of every single government, Wall Street and bank screw up for the rest of your life. And you know what that is? That's a darn cash value life insurance policy, right? That's the power of it. And yet nobody knows, practically no one knows about that strategy right there. Yeah, because they're all in their silos, you know, um, and, and yet pretending to be an expert in everything. So they just, when they see a life insurance policy, this, they just see death benefit, right? You know, they don't, don't really understand how it's being utilized. So yeah, I, I'm building up my network of partners uh, Peter, you're you're one example of someone that I partner with. Um, another example is Ben Feigenbaum, whom I've in, whom I've interviewed on my show. That guy has 38 years of experience doing just disability income insurance. That's all he does. That's Why would I try and replace him and pretend like I'm an expert? That that would be ridiculous. That would be ridiculous. It's not worth my time. And what hap What you find, of course, is that. If you have the scarcity mentality, and you're just like, no, I want all that money. I want all that money for myself, right? You end up probably not getting much of it, right? Because you're not going to be very effective. Whereas what you find is when you look to reward other people and you look for people to partner with, you get maybe a smaller piece of the pie, but it ends up being a much bigger pie. So these disability sales, I couldn't do them. They wouldn't happen without Ben Feigenbaum, right? So what he'll do as an example, which I can never do, um, and it wouldn't be worth my time to try and become an expert in it is people might come to me and they have disability coverage through an employer. And I say, okay, give me the contract, right? Go to your HR department, give me the contract. Ben will review it. Ben and his team will review it and like red line so that the people understand what coverage they have, right? That's an in-depth review that you'd almost need to be an attorney to do. I couldn't, I couldn't do that. And when he does that, then people start to understand the limitations of their employer provided coverage. And then they're more likely to consider buying some individual coverage. And I don't need to be an expert in disability. I just need to think big picture and understand how it fits into the overall picture. But if I were trying to get all that for myself, it, it, it just wouldn't work. I can't be all things to all people, right? Same thing with the first lien HELOC, right? So if you have a mortgage or you're looking to buy a house, you can use a first lien HELOC and it'll be much more effective. Do I personally do that? No, I'm an ambassador for the program. I refer you to the people who actually specialize in that. Um, in this particular financial malpractice case, the solution I'm looking at, I don't want to say I'm proposing it because I don't have all the details to propose a final solution, but there are multiple components working together. We have the whole life insurance policy, which I would do. But then we also have an annuity, which I wouldn't do. I would partner. There's a guy who does just annuities. I would partner with him. I know enough to be dangerous in annuities. I don't consider myself an expert. The reverse mortgage. I'm not going to do that. I bring in Don Graves, right? So that shows you in that simple example, 
shows you the power of partnering with other people rather than trying to do it all yourself. Because ironically, the, the more I focus on infinite banking, the easier it becomes to do a holistic solution because I'm using partners. I'm not trying to be an expert in everything, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, um, I think that's one of the things I, I struggled with actually for a good chunk of my career. You know, I, I tell people I, I wandered in the desert for the first 16 years of my career. And I think that was one of the issues. I didn't, I never really, I did a little bit of everything, which I'm not upset that I did that because I, I learned a lot, even though I failed while I did it. Right. Um, yeah. Sometimes you just got to stay in your lane and, and do what you're good at and what you have a passion for. And, you know, you, you have a passion for infinite banking. Right. And I give you such credit for that because, you know, when I, you know, if I, if I have a question about an infinite, infinite banking, or if I'm going to learn more about infinite banking, I, I go to you, Logan. I mean, you're, you know, you're, you're the expert at that. Right. So. Right. And I think a lot of people try to blur the distinction, right. Where they think they just see whole life insurance because they can't think conceptually. They're just thinking concretely, Oh, whole life insurance. Yeah. I know what that is. Well, that's like saying, yeah, I know what real estate is. Therefore I'm an expert in every single real estate investment strategy out there. No, <laughs> the real estate by itself is meaningless. It's what is your strategy for? What are you using it for, right? And depending on what you're going to use that real estate for will determine what kind of real estate you're going to buy, how you're going to design it, what you're going to do to it, right? Same thing with whole life insurance. Whole life insurance on itself doesn't mean anything in isolation, right? How does it fit into your overall strategy? Are we using it just for a permanent death benefit? Is it legacy planning? Is it estate tax avoidance, right? Is it key man insurance, right? Is it retirement income planning? Or is it infinite banking, right? It could be any number of those things. And we're going to design it very differently. And we're never, ever, ever going to look at it in isolation, right? That's where the partnering piece comes in because everything has to be incorporated into an overall strategy. And it doesn't require a lot. I mean, a little bit of coordination goes a long way. On a recent case, I'm coordinating with an estate planning attorney that I've worked with in the past. And um, it's amazing how just the fact that we're talking to each other has such a huge impact, right? It's incredible, right? No, absolutely. I mean, you got to coordinate. You want, you want the advisor to coordinate. You want the insurance agent to coordinate. You want the attorney to coordinate. You want the accountant to coordinate. That's what you need. You need a team that actually works together like um another agent right now i he actually delayed um he had a follow-up meeting and um he he was referred to this person by um an, an attorney but he decided that he we delayed these the follow-up meeting just because i had some questions on the back end that i wanted him to ask the attorney first before sitting down with this client Right. Because it just wasn't we didn't have everything we needed. Yeah. But imagine imagine if this financial advisor in this financial malpractice case had decided to partner with me. Imagine how much good we could have done for this client, because I don't know, nor have I asked what's in the portfolio, because that's not my lane. Right. I've come up with a plan. But I'm sure the plan would get a lot better if I could sit down with a financial advisor and he could explain to me, here's why we have these particular securities in here. And then I would come up with a better plan. And maybe I would say, hey, it makes sense. We don't need life insurance. We don't need long-term care insurance. We don't need a reverse mortgage. I mean, I'm open to the possibility, right? Um, but I'm sure that once I saw what was in the portfolio and understood why it was there, I could come up with a better plan. It kind of reminds me, getting back to my consulting analogy, right? Um, the people who are trying to just shoot you down, they'll conceal information from you. Right? They're not going to share any data or any information from you. And so then when you present your solution based on, well, this is the best I can do with the information I have, they'll shoot you down. And it's like, well, if you had provided me that information, I could have incorporated it. But if you're not going to work with me and provide that information, I'm just going to do the best I can with the information I have. That's all I can do, right? Um, so... You know, like in that solution, I'm kind of just in one fell swoop, annuitizing the whole portfolio. And I mentioned, you know, that may not be 
the move. Conceptually, I think that is what we would do, but maybe we just do a portion of the portfolio, you know, maybe there'd be an intermediate step, you know, if the financial advisor were willing to work with me. Yeah, I mean, because think about it, you could, you know, let's just say there's capital gains issues. Well, you know, if, if you're coordinating with that financial advisor, he could be saying, well, Logan, you know what? Why don't you take this portion um, because there's no capital gains or I don't, you know, I'm right. just making something up, but right. coordinate, right? Or, you know, say, you know what, Logan, that's a great idea, but can we do it in, in you know, one step at a time? So, and you'd probably be like, yeah, that makes sense. Let's, Let's get the, the cash value life insurance in force right now. And then let's, then we'll next step might be the, the HELOC, right? Or yep. the reverse mortgage or whatever. The reverse mortgage, yep. As GK Chesterton says, you don't tear down a fence until you understand why that fence was put there in the first place, right? So, you know, that's what I would do is any financial product or pre-existing thing you may have, I want to understand why was it put there in the first place before I do anything to it, right? Um, and of course, if that person who put it there is still there, I want to work with them. I want to partner with them, right? Yeah. No. Well, so yeah, I, I've got, I'm getting referrals from other life insurance agents who have clients who want to do infinite banking. And these are life insurance agents who thankfully have the abundance mindset not the scarcity mindset. They're sending those clients to me. They're not pretending like, oh yeah, I can do that all day long, right? I mean, in theory, because in theory they could, they do have a life license, they can put a whole life insurance policy in force, right? But again, that's like saying, just because I'm a realtor, therefore I know every single real estate investing strategy out there, I can do it all, right? Um, right. No, so the successful real estate investors, they focus narrowly, they find their niche, and they focus narrowly on that niche, whatever it is, Burr strategy, fix and flip, very specific commercial real estate, whatever it is, right? right. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, it, I thought I, when we started this financial malpractice series, remember how many times we mentioned how this advisor wouldn't have all these issues if he just would have incorporated um, you into the whole deal to begin with? Or maybe, maybe even if you weren't there, incorporated life insurance and annuities into the whole, into his practice, right? 